Hello friends, I'm Paul Brooks, adult Sunday school teacher for the North Greensboro Church of God. And I thank you for returning to our Sunday school lesson this week and our discussion of this week's daily Bible readings. We're having quite a rainy day here, as you can see. The rain's also a creation of God's. So let's be grateful while being responsible in our behavior. In this video, I discuss with you the daily Bible readings accompanying lesson number 11, the third lesson in our unit, Story of the New Testament. Lesson number 11 is entitled, The Letters of Paul, Part 2, with the central truth that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. This week's lesson provides a brief study of seven of the 13 letters written by Paul and included in the New Testament. This week, we're specifically learning about the relationship of Christ to the church, Christ coming again, and the requirements and responsibilities of Christ-like living and church ministry. Our daily Bible readings are to help set the stage for our lesson study spread out over the week to provide us with a daily devotional to better understand our God, Lord, and Savior and our daily walk with God with the help of the Holy Spirit. This week's passages begin in the Old Testament and Jacob's dream about the latter and build up to a meditation on the spiritual relationship between Christ and the church and our own relationships with Christ, the church, our family, friends, and others around us. On Monday, we began our reading with a passage from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 19, when we read about the story of Jacob's ladder. This is told to us as Jacob's first life-transforming encounter with God. Our lesson author stresses that as a result of his personal encounter with God, Jacob not only knew about God, Jacob actually knew God. The point here is that in our own life, knowing God is life changing. Tuesday, we read Psalm 24 about the King of Glory. Although the entire psalm is meant as a worship psalm to the glory of God and being in God's presence, David tells us in verses 8 to 10 who the King of Glory is, as if there was any doubt. Well, the point is that being in the presence of the Lord, the King of Glory, is cause for reverence, worship, and great joy. Yesterday, on Wednesday, we read from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, and read about one of the instances where Isaiah sees God's glory. Now, this is a passage that could actually bring comfort to many today who are troubled by the state of our government leadership. Isaiah was troubled after the death of King Uzziah and feared the passing of power. God comes in a vision to Isaiah, reminding Isaiah that he, God, was still reigning and in charge. This passage reminds us that leaders come and they go, but God lives forever and is forever reigning. Many changes and transitions come in life, but the truth is God is forever and God has supreme sovereignty over all things. Well, today, Thursday, we read from the New Testament in a passage from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51, and we hear Jesus referring to Jacob's ladder. Well, Nathaniel was the first of Jesus' followers to recognize and confess openly in verse 49 that Jesus was the Son of God. In today's language, Jesus, Jesus basically told Nathaniel, well, you haven't seen nothing yet. Then in verse 51, Jesus told Nathanael that he would see a vision, using references to the vision of Jacob and the ladder, of the heaven opening up and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. Well, tomorrow on Friday, we read another passage in the book of John from chapter 12, verses 27 to 41 or 37 to 41, and we learn that Isaiah saw the glory of Christ. 
Remember that the Bible and scriptures that Jesus and his followers had were the Old Testament Bible. We're reminded in this passage of one of Isaiah's Old Testament prophecies that many would see Jesus but would not believe in Jesus as the Son of Man, the Messiah. In verse 41, it's very clear that Isaiah saw Christ Jesus in his glory and he spoke of him. On Saturday, we finish with a passage from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 32, about Christ and the church. Paul writes about the relationship of husband and wife, representing the spiritual relationship of Christ Jesus and the church. And Paul also saw it the other way around, the model of Christ's relationship with the church as instruction for the husband's love for his wife. This whole passage, with its emphasis on the importance of relationships, reminds me of the new covenant in which we are restored to a relationship with our God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, something which the law never could do. Well, in this week's readings, we see that God provides instruction to us through his word, going back to the Old Testament, of the glory of God the Father and the glory of Jesus Christ. Included is a large dose of relationships, all of which set the stage for why we can believe the message this week that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. I would be remiss for not also pointing you to our golden text for this week from Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. He, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Well, you can't get any more direct than how the Apostle Paul just put it. I hope that you found meaning and understanding in this video and from your daily Bible readings that are helping prepare you for this week's lesson and also in your daily walk with God in this earthly life. I especially pray that this video helps you to understand the message for this week. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. So be watching our church Facebook page because I'll be posting another video this weekend to provide additional instruction for your study of this week's lesson. Thank you for viewing this video. And as always, I pray for you and your family's safety and for God's blessings upon you.